Good morning, everybody. Neil Winteregg with Matterhorn Business Development here. Welcome back to the newsroom. I'm here with Dr. Greg Winteregg, my dad, and uh, soon to be published author, by the way. That's right. Look out for that. <laughs> um, so anyway, we are here. We're at the newsroom. I came up with all sorts of great topics over the weekend and articles that I was going to surprise him with, and everybody decided that uh, my own segment was going to be flipped on me this week, <laughs> and they're going to surprise me with a topic. Boo so, yeah. Boo yeah. I see where I sit on the totem pole of power. <laughs> Apparently not as high as I thought. So we are here. Uh, you guys have an article that you have picked out for me. We do. So I guess lay it on me. Here we go. Automotive News, mm. December 3rd, 2018. Okay. Title reads, unlike 2008, GM cutting jobs, plants proactively. So GM is laying off workers not because they uh, and closing plants so okay, here's the okay, question okay is this good news for gm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or is this bad news mm. like if you own gm stock mm -hmm. do you start to worry and sell or is this like oh yeah now i'm gonna buy so is this good news or bad news as you read this title? Well, from a stock perspective, I have no freaking clue. <laughs> Watch the Uber valuation video. I don't pay any attention to that kind of stuff. But here's what's interesting about that. Um, so they're proactively cutting, not because the sales are down and they can't pay everybody, but because they, they are predicting a downward trend. Well, we don't know. Is basically what it sounds like. What's well, interesting so, is that. So what, what's your first reaction? Okay, is this well, my good first, news or is this bad news? My first reaction is that the auto industry has no idea what they're doing, period. Um, that's my Fair first, enough. That's my first reaction. Fair I mean, enough. Tesla, I just read an article yesterday. Mm -hmm. Tesla is doing the same thing. I don't think that the solution to any business is to actively shrink or actively try and get smaller. I don't know if that's ever a solution. Mm-hmm. And if you are having to do that, it's because you've made a lot of, I think if you have to do that, mm -hmm. if that is the answer, because people, there's probably statistically reasons why you have to cut back and you mm -hmm. have to lay off staff and you have to do all this stuff. But it means you were doing something at one point that was working mm -hmm. and you were making a lot of money and then you changed something. And wherever that change occurred that caused you to contract, that's where you made your mistake. Now, interestingly enough, I just bought another GM vehicle for, for my wife two months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll tell you why I say that the car industry has no idea what they're doing. Okay, go ahead. Now, <clears throat> full disclosure, I love the people that I, uh, I love the person that I bought my car from. So if you're watching this, Gabriel, I still love you. Okay, <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We knew what we wanted mm -hmm. and it still took eight hours to get the car. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. W I, I, it's like, okay, do you want this color? Do you want this color? Okay, no, we don't actually want that. We want to get this car with this color. Well, I can't find that car. Okay, well, somebody somewhere has to have that car. Right. So then the dealership doesn't want to deal with the other dealership to get you the car that you want. So then it's like, well, how about you buy this car? And it's like, I wanted this one in this color, mm -hmm. but we have this one in this color. And it's just like this back and forth of like, seriously, I'm trying to give you guys money. Right? Okay. And I, and I agree with you on all that. Okay. Okay. But if, when you read this title, okay. Unlike 2008, mm -hmm. when, when everything came out from underneath them, right. And the government had to bail them out. Right. Right. GM cutting jobs and plants proactively. Yeah. So now is this a good sign or a bad sign? It's when a, a bad when sign. A, when a business has to do this, is it's this a, bad a good sign. sign or a bad sign? It's a bad sign. Okay, good. So nothing good comes out of that. Well, we don't know because sometimes in order to stay with the times and follow the trend, mm -hmm. things have to be torn down. Things have to be like sometimes like you, you have a building that's been sitting there and for whatever the reason, uh, times change, traffic patterns change, and now it's not on the thoroughfare it needed to be. And so the business moves and then the building uh, is torn down and something else is created after that. Sure. So it could be a repositioning. For creation to occur, something has to get destroyed at some point in time. Times. That's true. Right. But I think from a business perspective, I don't think, I think anybody who is planning for shrinking or planning for less growth or mm -hmm. planning to become smaller mm -hmm. to eventually become bigger again, I, I don't, I don't, 
I think that's ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little more data now. Okay, give me some discuss. more information. Okay, so on the day CEO Mary Barra outlined the largest round of job cuts and plant shutdowns in nearly a decade mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. General Motors also was having an orientation for new hires around the corner. Such a juxtaposition has become common for GM as Barra and her executive team implement billions of dollars in cost-cutting measures in preparation for the next economic downturn and shift the company's fo focus toward costly emerging technologies such as autonomous and fully electric vehicles. Now, Barra never positions it, and I'm not going to read the whole article, yeah. that this is pre in preparation for an economic downturn. Right. And actually, it's just like, no, th this is just a repositioning of the company. Right. Uh, she goes on to say... All right, so I have to say one thing. Yeah, really go quick. ahead. Two, two things really quickly. Go or ahead. I'm going to forget, okay? Yeah. Number one, nobody wants self-driving vehicles. This entire thing of making everything automated is mm -hmm. the biggest joke I've ever heard, okay? Mm -hmm. I agree. Having a self-driving truck that can transport food and materials and all that kind of stuff from New York City to Miami and drive itself, I agree that that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Having that on a public road with other people is a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. You have to build a separate highway to actually make that function. Nobody wants a self-driving car. The only people who want self-driving cars is probably less than 10% mm -hmm. of the population who don't know how to drive. And so they think, well, I get in accidents every five <laughs> feet. I'll have my car do it for me. So that's no, rule number one. I think that that's Uber ridiculous. would like self-driving cars and they don't have to pay the drivers. Because then they don't have to pay the drivers. because they Then maybe they could make a profit. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the Uber video. <laughs> yeah. They still won't make a profit. <laughs> Number t the other thing I wanted to mention was um, the economic downturn. That is, the, people system, are projecting. Yes, people are projecting an, ep an economic downturn right. in the auto market. If you're projecting in uh, the auto industry to fall, mm -hmm. you're saying, okay, the auto industry is going to fall. Mm -hmm. You can actually control that. By, not every auto manufacturer has to fall. Not every auto manufacturer has. In economic downturns, that doesn't mean everybody suffers. But because everybody thinks that way, they, they automatically, they're creating their own downfall is the well, way here's, I look at it. Because as, as a CEO, yep. her job is to have a vision for the company. Mm -hmm. So anyone who owns their own business, mm -hmm. anybody who is a CEO, anyone who, I mean, you have 10 employees, those employees are counting on you to guide the company in a particular sure. direction, Sure. right? So the CEO has to have a vision. And this move is gonna make or break her. Mm -hmm. If she's right and she repositions the company yeah. and there is an economic downturn and the company now is more steady or stable, yep. whatever her strategy is, then that's good. Okay. If she's wrong, then she'll get fired. It's sort of like a coach, you know, you, you're, you can you can uh, blow up the team and restart and right. hire the new coach who comes in and rebuilds the team and does the whole thing. Right. So so um, in uh, the Saints game last week, they're getting really blown out. I mean, it, it, the Eagles are ahead fourteen to nothing. Right. In the and first. Sean Payne, in, in, yeah, in the first period, yeah. Sean, they're losing control of the game and they're about to punt and. There was a penalty, et cetera. Now it's going to be fourth and two or three. Right. They went for the They're fake. on their own like 30 yard line and they went for the fake and it com it won Change, the game. Changed the whole tide of the game. All right. So Absolutely. Sean Payton now has enough of a reputation that that move would not have gotten him fired. Right. But that move could have easily lost them the game. For so sure. this is this is kind of one of those decisions. Yeah. And this is my point here is like, I don't know if this is good news or bad news. You can put any spin on it that you want. You can spin it either way. And I, I have a feeling most people are going to spin it as a, a smart move or, or whatever. I just don't think that way. Well, we're going to see. Yeah. But, but I guess here's my point, because this is also in my book. The okay. title of the book is Fun at Work. In, in my book, I talk about how the CEO, the owner, has to have a vision for the company. And has to, has to be positioning the company to move forward. So what she goes on to say is... We're going to continue to hire because when we look at the skill sets that we need for the future, the, vehicles the vehicle has become much more software oriented. When you think about the hundreds of millions of lines of code that are in a vehicle that operates today, 
that's only going to increase, right? Then it goes on like businesses cases for electrified and right. autonomous vehicles remain unproven, just like you're saying, okay? Right. But I guess here's, here's the point to this one. You can look at a headline and you're like, oh, that's good or, oh, that's bad. I'm like, well, I admire this move okay. by Mary Barra because this is a tough call. This is, this is a political football. It goes on to say that Trump is now threatening to pull subsidies yep. because you're laying people off, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I guess the point of this one is you, you have to make tough calls. Definitely. When you own your own business, you have to make the tough decisions. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's nice to, to be your own boss, make your own decisions, that kind of thing. But then there's points where someone's going to have to be laid off. Yep. You know, uh, maybe somebody has to be fired. Yep. If for just for the the good of the group. So here, I admire this decision. I'm not saying whether it's good for the company or bad for the company, but I admire her as a leader because this is tough. This I is agree. tough. I think it is tough. It's not an easy decision to make, and being an executive, you have to make the hard decisions. I guess it was just my first thought. Yeah. Just because I, I, I look at it, I'm looking at this a little bit differently than you are, obviously, mm -hmm. on this. My first thought is that at any point in time, if as a business, you're going to make the move to shrink, mm -hmm. which is what this is, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're going to make the move to shrink, right. you made, you did something at some point in time that changed what you were doing that was creating an uptrend in your statistics. Mm -hmm. And if it's now falling, it's not because of outside factors. It's because of something that's internal that you can control. So I agree. <clears throat> tough call. And as an executive, you have to make the tough call. But my personal opinion is if you were doing something that was working and you were making money and you were growing mm -hmm. and you had enough people to have these 7,000 people in these factories and now you don't, mm -hmm. you did something. It's not the environment around you. It's not the economy. It's none of that BS. It's that you did something yep. that created that downturn. Yep. And that's what people are unwilling to confront. Yeah, and I agree with you 100%. Yeah. 100%. But you're right. It's, it's so, a gutsy move. It's a very gutsy move, her, her <clears throat> entire future. And it seems like a lot of things with the auto industry are planned like three to five years in advance. Mm -hmm. So if a car bails or, or fails and mm -hmm. bombs... That was a decision that was made like five years ago. So it's a right. very long term. Well, and the article thing. also references that the Volt was disappointing. Uh, the Volt came out, I think, right. in 2010, and it was disappointing in its performance and cost and profit and all of that. Yeah, whatever. But I guess the, the two points that I wanted to make out of this one are sometimes something does have to be destroyed For so sure. you can create or recreate. And then when you're in business, you have to make these tough calls. Tough calls and, have to be made. And it actually, the, the other reason I admire this so much is because she could have just sat back and just let whatever is going to happen play out. Sure. And then say, oh, I had nothing to do with that. It was the economy. It was this thing or that thing. You know, nobody saw this coming. Right. Not my fault. And she the, did something proactive on it. <clears throat> she did something proactive and she totally She at least put, made a decision. She made waiting. a decision and she put her career and her reputation on the line. No. And I admire that. That's good. I admire it too. Yep. My advice to, to the, the business owners that are out there, unless you are Mary Barra and you're watching this <laughs> <laughs> and you're running GM. I don't think most people watching this are running General Motors or a, a company of that size. But my advice is if you're seeing things go down, do not go with the shrinkage right look at what you did that you changed what actions you took that changed to create that downturn yep now obviously like i said with the auto industry things are sometimes five year three we're talking three yeah. five year life cycles you right. know when they made the c7 corvette in 2015 mm -hmm. they already knew what the c8 was going to be most likely right it's just it takes eight years to get there with a car like that so and the other the other piece of advice i would have along that line is if things are going down, don't go into agreement that this is how it is or correct. You know, th this is the politics. Who's in the White House? Yeah. What's happening with the price? Don't of listen oil. to what your competition don't listen is to saying. Any of that roll it back and look at what you were doing that was working. That's what exactly get, what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Get back to what was working. Correct. Now, there were some things that weren't working. OK, some of that needs to be changed. Correct. But 
just run back to when things were taking off and look at what you changed. And now you're, you changed something. You went into agreement with whatever, the political environment, the economic environment, Correct. et cetera. You know, the plant closed and you're more influenced by local economy than national economy. And so you are going to make have to make some tough you can tough control decisions, your income but you can control it you can control no, it no doubt without no a doubt, doubt. if you Always. have a product and you have a service Always. do not listen to what the competition is telling you about the environment you got to know what you can control and i'm going to end off with the, this final story so uh i graduated from dental school in 1981 and the practice was growing but by the spring of 92 it was the worst quarter i'd had in five years mm -hmm. we lost our anchor store in the strip mall yep Every other store closed. Yep. I had a long-term lease. So there's me and 100,000 square feet empty and a laundromat. 92, there was a recession. Mm -hmm. Clinton's first year in office, he had just taken over from George Bush and we were in a recession. And I had all of that justified. And I started getting some business basics. And in 90 days, I grew 75% and had my best month ever. Right. So I learned- Which was considered moment, impossible at that time. It was considered impossible. Correct. And during that recession, within 12 months, according to national surveys, my practice was in the top 4% of all practices nationally, and I'm in a town of 10,000. Yep. So, so this, is, this is Neil's point also, is like the external environment doesn't affect you. Nope. There are things, and you have to change your mind, and you're going to have to keep... You might have to pivot or do something a right. little bit differently. And but... work harder and get up earlier right. or whatever, but I've personally experienced this. So these are tough decisions, but you can't go into agreement that external factors are going to influence That's right. you. For That's sure. Right. When you listen to losers, you get losing advice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And if you start going into agreement that it's okay to lose, or this is the reason why I'm losing, Correct. you're dead. You're done. Yeah. And that's why I don't know, based off of this article, if that's what's going on, or if it's something else. Yeah, but we don't I, it, know. It's very interesting. We're going to have to keep our eye on it. It's a tough call, and I admire it. It's a it. tough call. Right. I, I definitely agree. All right, so we turned the tables on Neil today. I had fun. <laughs> this was terrible. <laughs> Never again. No, just kidding. And I, I hope you had fun, too. And if you want a pre-release copy of my new book, Fun at Work, then go to our landing page, funatworkthebook.com. You'll be one of the first to get the copy as soon as it's released. That's going to wrap it up for today's Business Newsroom. Thank you all for watching. Uh, like, give us a comment down below. Share it with your friends. Let us know what they think. And if you want to know more about how to sell, how to run your business better, how to be a better executive, go to MatterhornBizDev.com. Look us up. We'll have a link below in the description. You can also go to Matterhorn.Training and take our communication and sales test and show me how well you stack up in your field. <laughs> Hope to see you next time.